The United States has volunteered to supply the Ukrainian military with a wide range of weaponry and equipment during the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. The Ukrainian Air Force has requested sophisticated Western aircraft, which has been met with a lack of response. Some of the older aircraft have lately been offered by the U.S. Air Force, which has not pleased Ukraine's defense minister. The old aircraft the U.S. is willing to offer is the A-10 Warthog. In this video, we'll discuss why the Ukrainian government has expressed concern about not being listened to and why they continue to reject the A-10 formerly regarded as the best in the United States inventory. So stay with us till the end. The United States and the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense have been negotiating about what aircraft to send. In addition to defeating the invading Russian forces, there's hope that the Ukrainian Air Force can be built to safeguard the country from future threats as well. On July 20th, 2022, U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall stated that the military would be willing to contribute some of the country's A-10 fleet if Ukrainian officials requested it. This contradicts what he said at the AFA Air Warfare Symposium in March when he appeared to dismiss the idea. The Air Force has been attempting to retire this old attack aircraft, but has been met with opposition from the U.S. Congress. That's mostly up to Ukraine, Kendall responded when asked about the possibilities. An older U.S. aircraft could be an option. Any and all questions they have concerning our capabilities and how we can meet their demands will be welcomed. On the other hand, Ukraine does not appear to be interested in the United States' outdated A-10s. Alexei Reznikov, Minister of Defense, said that Ukraine doesn't want the aircraft and would rather like a fleet of F-16 Fighting Falcons instead, claiming that the A-10 will not be able to defend our skies and it will never be able to stop the enemy bombers and missiles. He went on to say that the attack plane would be a target for Russian jet fighters and anti-aircraft defense because we don't have the means to cover them, nor to break through the enemy anti-aircraft defense, and that the A-10 would have similar drawbacks to the Sukhoi Su-25, which the Ukrainian Air Force currently uses. Although the Ukrainian Air Force recognizes the A-10's merits, he said that it isn't what Ukraine requires at this time. Air Force personnel are tasked with intercepting hostile drones, aircraft, and missiles, as well as launching attacks on Russian sites in order to protect the country from the ongoing Russian invasion. In terms of destroying ground targets, the A-10 may be the best in the business. Nonetheless, he noted other aircraft provide Ukraine with so much more. Moreover, it would be a strategic error to focus on the A-10 instead of a modern multi-purpose fighter like the F-16 because of the financial and personnel resources it would consume. It's no secret now that the Ukrainian Air Force has a great desire for the American F-16s, and the reason for that is that the F-16 represents aviation might and power all over the world. Therefore, in order to demonstrate to the world that the Ukraine is a modern army capable of protecting itself, the pilots hope they can fly these aircraft. Since the 1970s, the U.S. military has used the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the A-10 Warthog. As many as 700 were made between 1972 and 1984, serving in battles like the Gulf War, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Various Air Force units, including the Air Force Reserve and the Air National Guard, currently use the aircraft. Ukraine rejecting the A-10 The A-10, despite its widespread use, is showing signs of wear and tear. Its top speed, for example, is a pitiful 420 miles an hour, a long cry from what modern aircraft can do. As a result of this, the U.S. Air Force has requested the retirement of 21 of them, which Congress continues to oppose. Ukraine's military advisor recently claimed that the A-10 Warthogs, which have been in service for decades, are slow and susceptible to the enemy's air defenses, despite U.S. Air Force officers' suggestion that the planes may be sent to help Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. Ukrainian defense advisor Yurli Sak said that his country needs Western standard fighter jets and combat aircraft in an interview. Although the A-10 is a support machine, is durable and highly deadly, Sak said Ukraine needs quick and adaptable aircraft in order to counter the Russian threat. We can conclude that if we took a look at today's Ukrainian Air Force needs, something fast and versatile, and F-16s fit that bill, Sak said. He also noted that the function that would be hypothetically performed by A-10s in Ukraine is already being carried out by a Soviet-era close-air support plane called the Su-25. The Warthog is one of the most structurally robust aircraft of its class. 
with several fail-safes and redundancies designed to keep the plane flying even after catastrophic damage. The aircraft is centered on its legendary GAU-8 Avenger gun, which remains an accurate and powerful weapon against a variety of heavy and light armor. Over 280 A-10 types are still in service with the U.S. Air Force Air Combat Command, the Air Force Reserve, and the Air National Guard, according to Boeing. The service has long pushed to retire the outdated Warthog, which officials think would provide minimal tactical value in a pitched great power clash with Russia or China, and is stymieing cash that could be used to develop lucrative next-generation platforms. Current A-10 pilots said that the permissive environment required for the A-10 to operate efficiently and carry out the task for which it was intended isn't there, because the A-10 was developed for a completely different conflict than the one occurring in Ukraine. Currently, military experts from the United States and the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense are discussing which modern aircraft would be the most effective at repelling invading Russian forces and building the country's air force in the future. In terms of destroying ground targets, the A-10 may be the best in the business. Other aircraft, on the other hand, provide Ukraine with so much more, Sack wrote in a statement. Furthermore, the A-10 will divert the majority of financial and human resources from the rearmament issue to a modern multi-purpose fighter, which would be a strategic mistake. There was also a plan to send Russian-made jets because Ukrainian pilots were already trained on those aircraft, but defense experts warned it would take far longer. Those plans failed because of disagreements over transporting the aircraft without endangering NATO airfields. Another problem is finding local contractors in Ukraine that can help with repairs and maintenance. That's not the only option, SAC noted, because the F-16 is currently in use by a wide range of allies that are near to Ukraine. Also, for environmental reasons, according to SAC, nearly all of Ukraine's regional partners are flying F-16s. The aid Ukraine receives on MiG-29 parts is something to think about. In place of the MiG-29, we'll use the F-16. It's a simple choice. During the sixth month of the anti-Russian campaign, the House of Representatives just approved $100 million U.S. million in funding to train Ukrainian pilots to operate U.S. combat jets as part of the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act. U.S. authorities are still debating which aircraft they'll use, but Ukraine's Air Force has continued to request the F-16s. The A-10 was once considered to be among the most capable aircraft in the United States Air Force's inventory, but due to advances in technology and strengthened defenses employed by their adversaries, the A-10 is presently being phased out of service. Moreover, because of its sluggish speed and outdated technological systems, the Ukrainians are also not particularly pleased with the announcement that they will be receiving this aircraft. In light of the current predicament, would the government of the United States comply with the demands of the Ukrainian people or refuse to do so? And would Ukraine persist in requesting only F-16s and refuse to accept anything else? If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for regular military updates. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching.